What's up, gacha gamers? There's a lot you need to learn about Tales of Pristoria in order to conquer some of the hardest missions. So in today's video, we'll be sharing with you essential tips that will help you with progressing more faster in the game. Starting with the first one, turn off your friend auto approval requests by going to the friends list and then navigating to the pending tab. There is a button on the upper right part of the screen called auto approval and it will be set to on by default. Make sure to click on it so that it says auto approval is off. You will receive receive a lot of friend requests from people who are lower level or who might have already quit the game and thus your list will mostly consist of just really weak support characters. And getting powerful friends is extremely useful for power up dungeons or raids because early on you will not have a full single element team and it's easier to clear harder power up dungeons just by using strong support characters from your friends list. Next tip would be for you to include in your team at least 1-2 to two characters who are good at building up the hit counter. The hit counter exists for a reason. The more hits you perform, the stronger your damage becomes. This becomes essential when using characters like Velvet or Stawn who have high attack stats but produce low amount of hits. If you have someone like Vicious or Yuri who produce large amount of hits with all of their arts, then when you go up against strong enemies, you will use your high hit producing characters first so that your hardest hitting characters can produce an even more amazing damage. And moving on to our next tip, make sure you utilize your attack order to its fullest potential. What makes Tales of Pristoria stand out from other gacha games is that you can achieve a lot of different tactics with just your turn order. For example, characters which have high overload cost mystic arts could be used to deliver finishing blows to enemies since you will get awarded bonus overload points, which means you will be able to power up and activate your mystic arts way more faster. You could also hold off from executing mystic arts before a boss goes into break attack mode so you could then unleash everything you got and deliver maximum damage. And finally, if you're all out of arts during combat, use basic attacks that produce the most hits first, so that stronger basic attacks get powered up by the hit counter. And there's vast amount of team building options available that will determine what type of tactics you will be able to utilize during combat. So make sure to get to know your team really well. But we all know that in gacha games, it's not the strategy that wins most of the time, it's just pure unlimited power. Which brings us to the next point, farm power up dungeons whenever you can. Progressing through the story is always a good idea, but your number one focus should be growing your characters and Memoria Stones. Each day, three elemental power-up dungeons become available, so keep an eye on those dungeons which correlate to your character's element and dedicate your time to gather their elemental XP potions. And don't forget you can also farm the Memoria Stone dungeons too, since most of the SSR and SR Memoria Stones provide really good raw stats. Next tip, make sure you participate in raids as early as possible. There are two energy systems systems in the game, AP and BP. AP is used for mostly any type of activity in the game including starting your own raid, whereas BP is used to give aid in other player raids. Think of BP as co-op energy points. Every time your account reaches a new rank, you get awarded 10 BP. You can only regenerate up to 10 BP and anything over the limit needs to be spent before you can start regaining the points. So make sure to give your aid in as many raid battles as possible. You will have a chance to earn valuable books to increase your character's art skill levels and more importantly, you will gain materials required to ascend your characters which increases their max level. And you might be asking yourselves, what's the difference between starting your own raid and joining one. And basically, every raid has a pool of rewards and if you start a raid, you're guaranteed to draw from that pool at least once. But if you're joining the raid, you might not get those rewards. But however, you will always obtain some amount of silver medals which can be exchanged for SR Memoria Stones and other goodies in the exchange shop. Speaking about Memoria Stones, make sure you don't awaken your characters by using their own Memoria Stones. It's a little deceiving, but you might have noticed that at any time you go to the awaken Awaken tab of any character, you are always able to awaken them if you obtain them. This is because you obtain a character from their Memoria Stone. If you decide to awaken that character for the first time, you will consume their Memoria Stone and thus be left without the actual Memoria Stone which gives you the passive bonuses and raw stats. This becomes especially crucial because of how hard it is to obtain SSR Memoria Stones and it's always better to just use the character without awakening it once and keeping their Memoria Stone to equip it in the party or substone grid. We will cover in the future video how you can awaken characters or Memoria Stones without spending their duplicate copies. But since 
since we're already on the topic of duplicates, let's talk about how you can convert duplicate rare memoria stones to redeem experience potions. So if you want to quickly level up characters and progress faster in the game, then go to the allies, memoria stones and then select from the lower left corner the convert button. If you have any rare duplicate memoria stones, you can select them and convert them into silver shards. By acquiring the shards, you can go to the exchange shop and obtain very useful resources such as large rainbow elixir which gives massive amounts of experience points and can quickly speed up your character's leveling progress, especially if their element power-up dungeon is unavailable during that day. And for our final tip, make sure you progress through the arena. A lot of people dislike PvP in gacha games because of how unfair it can get sometimes. But just by putting in some minimal amount of effort can get you some really nice rewards. First of all, after each arena battle you can obtain rainbow leveling materials for both your characters and memoria stones. Then there's weekly ranking awards which give glean stones and reaching even the lowest rankings can give couple of hundred of those. And finally, by battling in the arena you obtain arena medals which can be exchanged for arena summon tickets from where you can summon for more memoria stones and even potentially unlock exclusive chronos memoria stone and character. If if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and leave a comment. And if you're looking for more guides or useful videos, make sure to head on over to our website gotchagamer.com. This was Toby with Gotcha Gamer, thank you for watching us and see you in the next video.